Hey, everybody. I'm Captain Tommy Scoville, and you are on the lifeboat. What's happening? It is Tuesday morning, and apparently Brazy Girl is voting for Rick. It's probably a good thing. Uh, Plant Freak, glad you're here. Jennifer Folsom, what's happening? Shannon Smith, Daniel McCoy, um, Danielle McCoy, Roberta, Kristen Melinda, good to see you. Tree Hugger, what's happening? Clayton, doing all right? Hope everybody's doing well. Boy, last night was a good time, wasn't it? For us here on the boat. Uh, it was a lot of fun to listen to uh, to Collins. Uh, it was a lot of fun to talk to, um, to hear voices and to put uh, put faces and voices together it was a really, really cool thing. It was a different kind of a connection, but I want to talk about yet another kind of a connection. Because something happened last night that... Um, Yeah, something happened last night that's just, uh, I don't know uh, how else to say it. It's uh, its heavy. And you know what? I, I feel weird. Well, maybe I won't. Kelly uh, B69, how are you? Kelly, do me a favor and throw up a big thumbs up. If you know what I'm talking about and what I'm about to talk about, are you cool with what I'm about to talk about? Because if not, I'm going to talk about something else real quick. Last night, I have to catch up on, it's now routine to watch the AM live. Oh, well, that's cool, because I know where that's going. And then the PM from the night before, right afterwards. How cool is that? Huh? Well, you're going to love last night's, because last night's was a trip. Okay, but let me tell you about a trip. So, Kelly, uh, you've seen Kelly. Kelly's a convict, right? I love Kelly. Kelly's a convict. She's been to prison, and uh, has gotten out, and is turning her life around. Makes great content. Just super cool, man. Really, really a cool a cool chick and a uh, and a solid solid convict would right for real. Last night uh, she found herself in a, a bad situation. When you get out and you try to rebuild your life, it is the, the deck is stacked. I'm just not going to lie to you, the deck is stacked. So the reason that we all pull for one another so hard uh, after you leave prison is because the deck is stacked and most people don't make it. So the fact that she's out and doing well, but she's moved a few times. This is part of what happens, right? It's just how it happens. So she has moved and she got a roommate and uh, it didn't feel like the best of circumstances and the best of situations from Jump Street. And if you've been in the life, right, for any length of time, you're going to smell the life around you and you're going to notice it. And, it. and it's like a fart in an elevator, pardon me. But when you've been out of the life for a while and you see people who are around you who are getting wasted, getting loaded, doing whatever... You're going to pick up on the cues before you ever see the lifestyle, right? People are going to look at you and go, that's not doing anything. You're stupid. And you're going to go, oh, no, I'm not, right? I promise you it's, it can't be explained, but a lot of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Kelly, Kelly knew that this was going on before it was obvious that it, it was going on. Last night, it became obvious, and she kind of found herself in a position. Yeah, Valerie, it's a lousy situation, especially when you're trying to stay sober. You just got out of the joint, and there's somebody there who's uh, who's getting high. It's not doing you any real good, and it's in the eyes, and it's in the energy, and it's in so many of the little things. But she found herself last night in a frightening situation, like this could go bad kind of frightening situation and uh, wasn't able to, um, to, to crack off a call to 9-11 or to the police to come in and help her. That bad of a situation. On the bright side, uh, connection right? and having people that have your back is a real thing. Not just in this, we're here for you kind of a way, but in the, hey, you know what? I just popped into Discord and somebody in Discord said, would you like us to send a cop over there? And someone from our Discord server got a uh, police officer over there. And the roommate got out of the, uh, of the apartment. Um, you know what? Might be the coolest thing in the world. For real. Why you started the channel. It's, yeah, right? I mean, this is it. If this if this does not scream lifeboat at you, then and you're confused as hell, then you probably just got here. But this is the kind of stuff, right? This is the kind of stuff. Like um, if you listen to phone calls last night, were were two people that have YouTube channels. That's kind of silly YouTube channels in a lot of ways, right? Hooray Discord! Thank you, Calhoun. 
but when you heard Mary say, you know what, people from the lifeboat came to my rescue, or when we were, uh, or when we were losing somebody that was just so near and dear to the boat and two people from the boat were down with their family. Right. So when people say, I don't have subscribers, I have family and it sounds cheesy. It is when other people say it. What do you think of that? Right. And I don't mean all of them. There are YouTube channels out there that have audiences very much, um, very much like the boat. We're not, we're not the only one out there. I promise you. Right. My brother's got a channel like that. Reese has got a channel like that. Abram's got a channel like that. There are a lot of people out there that are doing stuff that brings people together so that they can hang out and talk. But boy, oh boy, last night was pretty heavy. Um, watching that video this morning because she made a video thanking the, the lifeboat and thanking connection. And then you know what? She filmed it in the moment. And it's raw and so freaking hard to watch. It really is. It's a rugged video. I'm so glad that uh, that, that ended the way it did. Um, how many calls in total last night? You're not going to believe me when I tell you. You are not going to believe me when I tell you. I will uh, I will let Johnny Scoville bark it out. You do remember or do you not? 611 times people tried to phone in last night to the lifeboat. If you're a long-standing crew member on the lifeboat, if you've been here since the very early days of the boat, that's really going to give you a very, very funny appreciation for uh, because, damn, um, it really is one of those, uh, yeah, it was, now, that's not 611 unique people. <laughs> that That's not close to 611 unique people. That's how many times the people uh, dialed in. So, I mean, it could have been 40 of you because there were a, a ton of repeat numbers. But wow, 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 was uh, was that phone clicking. Calhoun was on fire. I can see him. You can't. I also have now a completely different setup, right? So this big thing in front of me that I'm normally up here looking at you guys is now all phone stuff and things like that. So I'm watching what he's doing and the mouse is like lion and on the left side of the screen is a list of all of the calls that have come in and when they come in and it's like 839 and then 838 838 838 838 838 838 838 838 837 it's just insane like you they were just coming and every one of those calhoun had to basically go okay we're gonna we're not taking this call right now and they sort of put it to a you know a yeah he looked like like lily tomlin you know what, Jennifer? No one's going to get that. Well, no, I guess we're, we're a good crowd. A lot of people will get that. Be, a lot, we're all of the same age, I guess. A couple of you youngsters might not get that. But Lily Tomlin doing the phone operator is such a great skit, man. Hey, Kelly, you know what? We love you. For real. That was a, I freaked out this morning, and I apologize to Anique Alexander because Anique reached out to me to uh, – you know, to, uh, to tell me what was going on. And, and I probably jumped her stuff because I always, like, if you say, well, there was something that happened last night, you know, and it involved, I I'm, I've lost it. I'm like facts. <laughs> tell me exactly what happened. Is somebody okay? Um, please Cindy, come on board. So honor to have you here. Uh, really, uh, I didn't jump her. I really didn't, but I knew I would have, if I stayed on the phone, I was like, uh, she's all right. Give me the, you know, give me the bullet points and then I'm going to go watch her video in double speed. Uh, one ringy dingy. Yes. See G gypsy Daisy gets it. If there was no Lily Tomlin, there would have been no Gilda Radner. You know what? That's a really excellent statement for real. That's pretty sharp. I think, I think there's a lot of, uh, of Lily in, uh, in, in, yeah. In Rita to be sure. I loved Rita. Oh man, did I love Rita. Same people will see the ball. Yep. I had a wicked crush on the believer. Hear that? Johnny Scoville had a now, there's nothing silly about that. She Still. was beautiful. Oh. Man, oh man. And if you ever saw her not in her element, forget about it. Yeah. When she Smoke was her. when she was able to not uh play, you know, the character, when you just saw her out being her, if you saw her in interviews when she was younger, she was a smoke show. And she just had the most bubbly, um, you know, personality you've ever seen. This is a great comment. The sheer joy Reese clearly felt 
uh, plus your joy of experiencing those calls last night was truly amazing. So touching. You know what? I have a picture that uh, that it's like a, a mock up that somebody made and sent to me. Uh, and I was going to put it up, but I I'm going to wait because I want to see if uh, if Reese is going to do something with it first. It's it's the coolest picture you've ever seen. I think it was. I'm guessing, but I think it was when um, when. Uh, rain called in. I think that's the uh, the part of which you saw. But when she realized that both of them were on the on the uh, the call, husband and wife, she lost it. And that eh, where she looked like a bit like a Muppet. And I think somebody actually said in the comments last night, look, Reese has turned into a Muppet. But it was uh, you're right. Saturday Night Live was never the same after Gilda died. That's a fact. But it was really uh, it was really a joy to watch uh, Reese in that moment. It was definitely very, very cool. And she doesn't have a perspective on this. You know, Johnny's been doing it for so long that even though the boat's maybe three years old, I didn't have to wait. Like every YouTuber has to wait for people to go, Oh, I know who you are because I was his brother. Right. So I think I had a, a, a jump start on this. She has spent, she doesn't watch other YouTube channels. She doesn't. She watches The Lifeboat. She, she watches Aaron, but she, it's not like she's spending a lot of time on YouTube. She does not look at analytics at all. Just does not look at them. Doesn't. Uh, if if we had enough time where the two of us could be in a room, tell me what you have to say. I would love to hear it. If we could get in the same room, I would love to show her uh, things like Matrix. You know, things like how to look at. Uh, at what she's doing. Uh, Kat, I agree with you. 100%. I agree with you. Kat says the uh, sound last night was a bit annoying. I agree with you. There's no question. And we had talked very seriously about doing the tests without you guys. Um, sadly, Steven Tyler now looks like Lily Tomlin. I'm going to I'm gonna have to, to disagree, Cricket, right? because Johnny said something really, really funny. In 10 years, Carly, Simon, and Steven Tyler will be indistinguishable. That's right. In 10 years, Carly Simon and Steven Tyler will be indistinguishable. Um, when you go back and watch it, Calhoun, there's some uh, some cracks and some snaps and the thing with Reese being uh, unable to hear. But it was our first our first run at uh, at doing this. And I'm really glad that we tested it the way we did. We didn't have a perspective on the amount that the phone was going to ring. And to test it the way we did uh, last night, I think was probably the best case scenario because if we had gotten it put together and tested it and everything was groovy, 611 calls in 30 minutes is going to put whoever your sound engineer is into a kind of hell that very few people uh, have ever experienced. And the crazy thing is Spanky was, uh, he looked like he had jumped out of an airplane um, when, uh, when it was over, he had the, the adrenaline rush that that brought in. I, I think poor Spanks was probably up until about two or three o'clock in the morning <laughs> with the uh, with the buzz of that. But I think that that happened to uh, I couldn't sleep last night. And, and I'll bet you Reese was the uh, the same way. Um, wasn't that funny? Because she really was like a kid. She's like, one more call. And then she gave me I got a I got an email about me being old and, uh, you know, and decrepit and how much more fun it would have been if I could have uh, maybe done 30 more minutes. but. Uh, I think that might have been more than my local top 40 radio station got on Saturday night in the 90s. <laughs> oh, that is so funny, man. Uh, you know, Joan Rivers was good, Cindy. Um, can you think of any great female comedians currently? Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, you know what, Johnny? Bat too soon. Too soon. I'm, 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 no, I'm out. You. No, no, oh, I'm out. You. you can't drop that. And then I didn't say it out loud. I have no mic. Nobody picked it up. Don't throw me under the bus like that. Here's the great thing. I don't even have to throw you under the bus. Becca Jean, can I, uh, where is your comment? I wanted to see what you had to say, but I didn't I'm see it. I'm looking too. I can't see it. So I didn't miss it, right? There's not I, been. I, I haven't, must have snuck on you, but I don't think I did. Becca Jean, I want to hear what you got to say, hon. I really do. Um, but. Big shout out to the uh, to the crew of the lifeboat, especially to those that last night were in uh, Discord and uh, and were there for what connection is capable of. Becca Jean hasn't had a drink in 365 days in a row. 
I'm sorry, 300 and what? Today is one year. I'm sorry, 365 yes, days. Becca Jean, it's Becca real. Jean, I hate to do this to you. It's real. I hate to do this to you, but this is a leap year. <laughs> oh. We've we, we got to get you to do this one more time tomorrow. I'm going to celebrate this with you today. But 2024 is a leap year. We're going to have to do, we're going to have to do this two days in a row. We're going to have to do this two days in a row. So do not blow me off. You better be here tomorrow for the lifeboat, right? Because technically there is an extra day in the uh, calendar this year. So although technically 365 is a year, it's 365 point. There are 13 months in the Ethiopian calendar. Just saying. We're not going to celebrate it on the Ethiopian okay, calendar. But, but way to be there for Becca Thank Jean. You. Becca Jean, this is for you. Because you know what? When you stop counting in days and you go to months or weeks, rather, it's epic. And when you go to months and you're like, I got four months in. What are you doing, John? What was that? What, did you, what were you doing? Wow. We really need another camera in here, people. Uh. But when you go to the point where you can start counting in years, right? Um, you've made it. You really have. Now you know what's cool, Becca Jean? Now the BS is over, right? The BS is over. You're, you are at base camp. This is legit. You're at base camp. This is where you go, oh, all right, well, that's over. You're not trying out that sober thing anymore. Right? You're living it. You're living it. Now, when it really starts to uh, to get kicking, um, yeah. Gamer Jackie, absolutely 100%. You know what this comes down to, people? I'm going to break this down and make it real easy. It's going to make so much sense to you. The, the setup that I want for this phone system is going to cost me a freaking automobile. I'm not playing. The, the setup that we want is going to be a car. However, I'm not buying a car for uh, a trip to the store once a month. Now, that's what it was the first time we tried to do this. This is not the first call in. And the first time we tried to call in, it just didn't work. It just didn't work. And, and we actually had a bit of a better setup because it was a rented setup at the time. Now, we're not going to do that because 600 plus calls justifies an automobile. <laughs> Make no mistake. It justifies an automobile. But what uh, what we did yesterday was nothing shy of a miracle. <laughs> I'm not even joking. And really, with a, with a computer system, what we will be capable of doing will be uh, insane. Right? You guys will have a nice conversation with Spanky before you go live, at which point he can say, I love that you love these guys. Is there also a question? <laughs> right? Or anything like that. And I'm I love that we all said hello. It was a test. It was what we were supposed to be doing. But when we start to do it on a uh, regular basis, right, we're going to get to a point where you're going to be working, uh, you're going to be talking one-on-one -on -one with the, uh, you know, the producer. And then as we're talking, both myself and Relatable Reese would have the opportunity to see on the bottom of the screen, right, Lisa from Jersey, right, the name will pop up. So we will be able to say, hey, Lisa from Jersey, how are you? Well done. Good. You're glad you're here. And we will be ready to knock that out. Right? We will be ready to knock that out. Um, that's the concept. But once again, you got to really do everything within your power to make sure that uh, you're not shoving chips into the center of a, a table that may carry. <laughs> Gary Busey fans unite. Don't you hate uh, autocorrect? But we know. Um, no, you know what, Cindy? Here it is. What it is is, what it is is exactly what everybody who is a professional and does this, it's the setup that they got. But we're not professionals. <laughs> we're not. We're, a, we're a, 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 uh, someone who grew up in a cult and an ex-convict who, for whatever reason, right, have a great great crowd. We somehow, for both of us, when we started rolling, got a group of people together um, that really Oh. That's a very cool concept. I'd love that too. But I really, yeah, All In Bro is right. Last night, 
last night was an eye opener in a way that um, <laughs> you're semi pro. Aaron, I love that. <laughs> I love that. That's that's probably the best way that you could put that. That's right. We're sem we're uh, we're semi pro, but we have gotten to the point uh, where we're going to start acting a little bit more pro. Um, where do we mail actual paper material? That address is in the Dropbox, I believe. Yeah, um, should be in the Dropbox. So what's going to happen is we're going. You're going to have the uh, the opportunity to, and we're not going to do a call and show every day, right? We're not going to do that. Um, but uh, we're certainly going to do um, a decent amount of it. And this is the, the when the lifeboat started. It was called the Tommy Scoville Show, and we made videos. And then we went live. And when we went live, the people freaked out and said, you're a live show, right? That's our favorite format. That's what we like the most. Now, if that is, um, I know that Dropbox is a, oh, drop down. Sorry, there you go. Thanks, Calvin. Drop down. There you go. It's in the drop down. What did I say in the Dropbox? Thank you, Calvin. I know what you're doing. You did it. That's because you, you're not very bright either. See, Johnny goes, I know what you meant. It's because he's not too slick either. Um, let me tell you something. Anik is uh, absolutely um, one of the uh, one of the great people that has ever found the lifeboat. We have been um, we have been incredibly blessed that uh anik alexander is uh is here and you know what it's uh and she'll hate this which makes it even more fun because she's just not that person right she's really gonna hate this but uh anik helps and she does so without me asking her to do it i never have to ask her to do something she always does it i'll tell you to the point at how extreme it is so the bot that tells everybody on uh, um, the platforms that I'm going live on YouTube, right? All of those things that go out, the bot quit working about, I don't know, 45 minutes after we got it. I didn't know that for a month and a half because she's just the bot. He just goes and does it. And then one day I was saying something about how convenient it is. And he said, oh, it doesn't actually do that. It hasn't done that. I, I do that. Um, 99.9% .9 of people on planet earth, I would have known they were doing that on the third day they were doing it. Right. I wouldn't have found out a month into it. And I think that that's a pretty cool thing. You know what, Calhoun, there's a lot going on, brother. Uh, we're not, not at all. Um, Miss Sunrise Dawn, that is definitely a bone you should be picking with me. I apologize. You know what we're going to do though? Um, oops, I got the wrong one. Here you go. Here's what we're going to do. You know, I have no ability, Calhoun. Can you see this? How am I doing? Okay, Sunrise Dawn. I don't know where your comment is, but we'll make sure that you, uh, when we fire up the next one, that you're the first call we get. Oh, would that be? You know what's really funny? Do you remember my first call-in show ever? Vaguely. A guy called in. Uh, listen, this is great. If you've been on the boat, the very first time we ever did a call-in show, years ago, we got a call. Like we turned it on and the phone rang and this dude was unique. He's a very unique character. I don't think he needed any um, help necessarily, uh, but he was a unique individual. Uh, and we had this conversation because after he spoke to us for a very long period of time, he said something along the lines of uh, when we went to get him off the phone so we could maybe get another caller, he was like, well, I'm not, I'm not done. So we said, well, how about if you meet us back here tomorrow? He's not come back yet. Maybe he'll show up. Um, now, it's. Uh, what was the first radio that you called into? Pix 106. It sure wasn't the John and Jeff. Show. It was not the John and Jeff show, although I called into them a lot. But that was not the first one. We used to, we used to prank call the John and Jeff show. My brother and I used to do it on the regular. Because it was a, a nationally syndicated talk show that I don't know how it's a nationally syndicated talk show. I'm sorry if you love John and Jeff. I'm they sorry. They should be unloading trucks. And just, it's uh, it's a really, it really almost seems like a Saturday Night Live skit to me. 
right? But anyway, no, the first call in was PIX 106 in, uh, in Killington, Vermont. I called into PIX 106 and I said to the guy, I think I was probably 12. And I said, if you don't play Margaritaville by Jimmy Buffett, I'm turning the knob and I'm never coming back to this station. And uh, he liked it so much that he played it. He goes, oh man, you got to hear what this guy said to me. And he played it. And then he put on Margaritaville and I had my little recordable, uh, re uh, what do you call it? Cassette player. They were mono. They couldn't even record in uh, stereo. They were mono. If you put a pair of headphones in, it would only play out of one ear. You, do you remember what I'm talking about? The little portable cassette players? Okay. So I took my portable cassette player and I hit record and I put it right next to the speaker. And that was how I got my first, uh, my first copy of uh, Margaritaville by Jimmy Buffett. Yeah, hitting the record button at the perfect time to get the song, Chris, and that was it. And you didn't really, I mean, you kind of got it, but you didn't because you're recording it in mono off of a stereo. It was it was a bad system. It really was. It was a bad system. And do you know how many people that I knew who used to, I'm not kidding, right? Like they, uh, mom and dad were not able to get them a, a Walkman, but they would sport one of those things on a belt, right? <laughs> With one ear plug going into their ear. This was a thing in the part of Vermont I was from. Nice. Nice. KL KLSS 106.1, the station with plaques. <laughs> Queen, another one bites the dust. You know what? We were calling at the same time, Midwest, uh, Midwest Doc. We were calling at the same time. I promise you. I remember I recorded the first top 40. I was talking about this with Johnny Scoville the other day. The first top 40 I ever recorded off of the uh, the radio. And I'm stopping in between songs, right? I'm stopping. So you got to hang out there. Um, yeah, that's bootlegged for real, Kelly. So I'm stopping in between songs. And when Casey Kasem comes back on, you'd hit record and you'd be like, ah, oh, crap, he's making a speech. And then you try to back up and time it. But the number one song in the country was... Another one bites the dust with Queen. Um, Blondie was in there. The tide is high, but because I, I remember, like I listened to that top forty nonstop. Like I, I learned every single one of those songs. And crazy, we lived in a different time, didn't we? We lived in a different time. Gamer Jackie says in Kalamazoo, one hundred three point three WKFR. Won a CD of my choice and an in living color crew jacket. Shut. How cool is that? I won a Big Mac when I was seven. John, yeah, Johnny won a Big Mac when he was seven. He had to be able to tell them everything that was on a Big Mac. You know, the two uh, all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce and cheese, pickles and onions on a sesame seed bun. Yeah. Except they had a commercial at the time where the people sung it. And when they asked uh, Johnny what was on it, he sang it. And you know, though, how you remember things from your childhood? I remember that from my childhood that's one of the few things that i knew from way back do you know do you know why i remember because i remember saying to my mom because johnny goes so how does this work and she goes well they mail they mail you the, the uh the thing and i was like they're gonna mail you a big mac like this i remember as a kid thinking well that just doesn't make a far bit of sense right that's a dumb idea you mail somebody a big mac it's not and my mother saying no 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 they're gonna mail you a piece of paper and then you take that there that was the the concept of the you know here's your voucher kind of a thing that was the first time that concept uh, was was brought up and I remember this is my son when he was little my oldest son sent him the box off to win a com uh, computer from a box of cereal so we put it in the mailbox he goes when do I get my computer I'm like dude it doesn't work that way he goes I'm gonna win right I'm like no I tried to explain it. like there are four four people in the room we're gonna pick one what are your chances number you know one in four and I tried to explain to him but I'm like he, he was like when do I get it. Oh, that's hilarious. That is funny. Uh, you know, I had uh, Spanky was a little boy and I went to the store to buy. Um, he used to, I uh, can't remember what these things were. Sour. Uh, they were straws and they were horrifically sour. And Spanky had a, a pretty rugged addiction to them. And we lived so close to the store that I was always terrified he would try to walk to it. Um, yeah, I got Kiss 108 in Vermont. Absolutely. Is it 108 Kiss? No, it was Kiss 10. Yeah, it is 108. Yeah, we got Kiss 108. Um, but I went up there and I bought two sodas and I came back. It was a Mountain Dew sodas. 
And I took the top off and I threw it up onto the uh, counter and Spanky's mom picked it up and went, you won two mountain bikes. And I'm like, why do I have a problem believing that? She's like, no, it says we won two GT mountain bikes. So it says, you know, you go to the, and this was brand new, but go to the internet to find out how this thing works. And I'm like, this is going to be such a hassle that I'm not going to want any part of it because I'm just that guy. You know, I'm, I'm a jerk. I really am. But so we go to this website and they're like, uh, you know, put in your address and we put in our address and they said, okay, call this bike shop. We called the bike shop in town. And they were like, come on down. Your bikes are here. And I was like, how is that possible? And he said, well, everybody who got bikes sent out got stickers. And if you happen to be the winner, that local shop just puts the stickers on the same Mountain Dew and you get the two GT bikes. You were the last person who ever won anything off the internet. So the day, the day that we took the top off of these things, we had two mountain bikes at the house, which immediately my friend uh, Cody got on one, rode off, and I don't think I ever saw it again. Um, w, WVTC at the college radio station, you could request songs. Uh, I had a, uh, I had a, a show my freshman year in college. I had a radio show. I got into so much trouble. I was a good DJ too, but I just got into so much trouble. You know what? I was, I'm just not a, not a smart person. <laughs> I'm not a smart person. You know, this is what radio shows wished they were in the eighties. Got connection, solid contacts and Tommy and Johnny and Spanx in the morning. You know what? There's, there's probably something to that. There's probably something to that. Mountain bikes are fun. Midnight Joe says, I love a mountain bike. Uh, you know, I just bought a, uh, a really, really old bike that I'm. Um... Yes, we're corrupting the youth. We're uh, I'm, I'm restoring a bike currently. I bought a really, really um, old, old guest. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we try not to burn the guests. <laughs> there, there was a, uh, there was a period of time where um, where radio uh, personalities kind of got. Yeah. Looking at you, Howard. Yeah, radio uh, DJs, just personalities, just kind of got nasty. You know what I mean? Like Howard Stern and Bull Cow and I'm sorry, Man Cow, Bull Cow. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. I meant Man Cow. Bull Cow is cool. I'm sorry. Bull Cow is awesome. awesome. I grew up with Saturday Night Request Show, CBC Radio. That's Tony B. No top Tony. Um, I liked when you could win stuff under soda caps. I did too. I did too. Uh, Roberta says, Howard is human garbage. I, I'm not going to argue that. What do you think of that? I'll even throw it up there. No, I know. I know we got. I know that we've got Howard fans here. Um, I also know that the people that hate Howard listen to Howard more than the people that like Howard. Right. I mean, that really is a statistic. And. I'm not a fan. I'm not, I'm not a fan of the cat at all. And what's really, you know what? Here's the crazy thing. This is going to blow you away. But do you know why I don't like Howard Stern? This is going to blow you away. Because it's not what you think, I promise. Um, Howard's funny as hell. He is. And, he, and he's, you know what? He got onto this kick. He got onto the bisexual kick right in the beginning. Right? And that was the push. Everything he talked about was with two women being together. And he knew that that, that was pushing the envelope. And then, look, we're all adults here. He did this anal thing after that. He kind of got, got onto that kick. But he was always kind of pushing the envelope. And I didn't have a problem with that. Because even if it's not my gig, if it's not my taste or whatever, turn the friggin' knob, right? I'm not, I'm not trying to ever stop anybody from saying anything. You don't dig it, turn the knob. I don't care, right? My problem is that hypocrite piece of crap right, has gone and completely tried to rebrand himself, right, and has turned his back on people that he was working with and, and friends. Like, Howard has become everything that Howard used to pick on, right, when he was that cutting-edge shock job. Now he's the, the, the establishment that he hated, and I think that that's, he's a sellout. And I didn't like the original shtick. I really didn't. I didn't listen to Howard. I was never, I mean, I listened to enough of Howard to know what his shtick was, you know, I mean, hundreds of hours. I, had, I worked at a, uh, a robotics factory and they worked, they listened to him every single freaking morning. And then they would put on Stevens and Pruitt. Now, if you're a, uh, if you lived in the, uh, in the Houston area, you may remember uh, Stevens and Pruitt in the morning. Can you remember the radio station? 
Uh, we got any Houston fans? What was Stevenson Pruitt on? What radio station? Stevenson Pruitt and Eddie the Boner Sanchez. They had a great. No, they had a, no. That's uh, that's New York. That's old old. Uh, Howard plays social justice warrior, so he doesn't get canceled. Vince, I agree with you, and I think, I think, yeah, I don't have any respect for the cat. I don't. I really don't. I don't. I think he's a low life, and I think that. And I think that the stuff that he puts out makes the world be 101 KLOL. KLOL. Turn it off. Rip it off. <laughs> Here's what they look like now. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that's what they look like now. I could have done without that. <laughs> KLOL. Pajama Pixies. You say what you want. We're more entertained. Do you know what? Uh, Stevens approved. Yeah, Pajama Pixie beat you to that. How funny is that? How funny is that? Were they on KLO? KLOL. Don Imus, uh, he was harsh, but he did great things for kids. You're right, he did. Uh, and he was a free show to watch. Tell me if you Don know. Imus? Oh, oh, I loved watching Don Imus. Oh. I didn't like listening to Don Imus, You're but he was so yeah, fun was so to tense. watch. I was tense to watch him. It was like, I was nervous watching him. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 uh... I'm watching a Linda on a tightrope. <laughs> <laughs> You like that? That's entertainment. That's a lot of entertainment for two dollars. For two dollars. Uh, Timmy, 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 Timmy. Let me find it. Let me find it. Sorry, I had. Uh, I got you. You keep going off on I had Johnny Scoville and I. I would have known how to try and understand my son's addiction to alcohol and drugs. For that, I am grateful. Oh, very cool, Timmy. Calhoun, if you could find that, would you put it up, please? Uh, it's Tammy's comment, please. And you know what? I can't. Uh, I can't begin to tell you um, the amount of uh, the amount of change that this uh, this experiment has uh, caused in my life. Because I didn't set out to talk to any of you who weren't drug addicts. Do you understand what I'm saying? I didn't. I didn't have any desire to talk to any of you. If you were not drug addicts, Sherry, don't leave because I just said that. Oh, but that's not this. But the longer that I hung out and the more that I got to know people, the more I realized that this we're all in the same boat stuff goes so far beyond addiction and drugs, right? How many people do you know, honest to God, how many people do you know today who are happy, right? Who, are, who have no addiction, they've got nothing on their life, and they literally just go through the day uh, just using tools like a person is, is supposed to. Yeah, that counts as an addiction. Skill, that done. counts as an addiction. Um, nobody hasn't used, right? So it really becomes this thing where all of a sudden you start going, yeah, we're, uh, we really are all in the same boat. Whether you're struggling to try to shed a few pounds or you're struggling to try to have a better relationship with your kids or maybe your spouse, right? Your spouse is completely normal. Good for you. I've never met one. I'm not being funny. I've never met one. Isn't that great? I mean, I thought I had. I keep thinking I have. And then I get to know the people and I start talking to them and I go, holy crap, right? Reese is not a drug addict. Don't don't get that messed up either. She's not a drug addict. People have um, Reese has been very very open about her drug use and her drug abuse. Right? She spent a couple of years every day doing meth. Now that would make her a drug addict, wouldn't it? It just doesn't work that way. I mean, it would be really convenient if it did. Yeah, I mean, you nailed that. Because this is um, this has been an experiment, right? That and I got to give Mark Wages credit. I really do. I got to give a ton of credit to Mark Wages. Um, number one, he saw the live thing before I did. He really understood that if we were we couldn't do videos and be the lifeboat, right? Now we were doing videos and and. What would happen is, I'm not kidding, we would get 60 views 
right? Or 70 views and 300 comments, right? And you just, everybody was trying so hard to communicate with one another that we were doing it in the comment sections. Somebody would leave a comment like Midwest uh, Kid Doc and someone else who wanted to communicate with Midwest Kid Doc would leave a message, a comment under that. And all of a sudden people were supporting each other in the comment section. And I'm not the brightest bulb people. I don't understand this stuff. I don't, but Mark sure as hell did. He said, you wait until these people are able to do this in real time. And the very first time that we went live, people just went, wow. Loki says, my husband now hasn't had a uh, no drinking problem, has no never had a drug problem, gave up smoking like nothing, but he is hooked on Pepsi. You know, everybody kind of has something, you know, everybody kind of has something. So with with Reese, what Reese had was a desire to escape and meth allowed that to happen. What she didn't have was an addictive gene. So when the time came that she said, this isn't making sense, she just went, meh, 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 walked away. Never had one craving to go back and do it again. Just isn't there. Reese doesn't drink. It's just not a part of her life. There's no addiction in there, right? Not no substance abuse problems, not at all. But you're going to tell me Reese doesn't need the lifeboat, right? For real. This, this connection stuff, Reese will be the first person to tell you Reese is a different person today than she was two months ago. I'd be the first person to tell you I like this Reese way more than I like the one two months ago. And I dug the one two months ago. I did. But the more that the more that we connect with one another, um, the more that we, yeah, please don't ever, please don't ever share locations and do that stuff on here. It's just a good rule. We don't want to, we don't want anybody to every once in a while someone will put an, an email or something up. Please don't put any contact info or do anything uh, in the in the feeds. It's it's a it's just never a good idea. We're a great group of people, but that doesn't mean that dirtbags aren't watching. In fact, we know a few dirtbags that are watching, don't we? Eh. You know why they're watching? Because when they make videos and they do their stuff, like ten people show up. So I'd imagine they're looking for connection, just like everybody else. Sadly, we had to block them, and now the only connection they get is watching us, and that's sad. For real, because connection is a really, really good thing. Um, it really is. It is a really, really good thing. Kelly, good call. Good call. ASAP Lizzie, you think that because you are right. <laughs> I think some are hardwired for possibilities of addiction and other factors come into play. Sometimes it's a perfect storm. Exactly. Right? Just like somebody that gets type 2 diabetes, you get born with the predisposition to get diabetes. Now, if you knew that instantly, and they said to you at 16, this is it, this is it, you get over this body mass index, your odds get, and you go, oh, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm six foot two, and I'm going to keep 188 pounds. That's what I'm going to do, right? Um, by the way, at 188, I'm I'm dangerously thin, right? But if if that's the, the route you went, you could say, I'm going to live a lifestyle that's going to do everything within my power to make sure that I don't get that because lifestyle could allow that to happen. Pick the exact same thing with somebody who has a disease instead of diabetes, type two diabetes, they have um, opiate use disorder. If they never take an opiate or they take opiates when they break their thigh, you're not going to get addicted. The opiate is going to go to the pain. I promise. That's how it works. Right. The trouble becomes when the pain goes away and someone takes one more pill. Right. When the when the pain's gone and you take that pill, it's going to get you a number. But you're absolutely th this is what science tells us. Right. This is what science tells us. So my first wife was addicted to heroin and is a uh, an alcoholic recovered, has not done anything in decades. Right solid, no lie, no stumble, right? Um, our daughter genetically is probably in some trouble, right? I'm a heroin addict. She's a heroin addict. There's an excellent chance that our, our offspring is going to have that uh, predisposition. It's not a lock, by the way, but it's a damn good chance. Now, 
if you start tracing the tree back, we get more addiction, right? There's some more alcoholism, some other stuff. And the more that stacks, right, the, the worse the odds are. But it is nature and nurture. It's environment as much as it is genetics. Because if you take my daughter and you drop her on a deserted island and there are no opiates, <laughs> right, on that island, there's not much chance she's ever going to get addicted to opiates, no matter what happens in her life, right? Just not going to, uh, not going to happen. So it's a, it's a combination of, uh, of the both to be sure. But you know what? The more that people are educated, I mean, holy hell, have that conversation with your kid, right? I can't tell you how many times I've had that conversation, right? My daughter's real damn aware of what some pain meds could do in her life. And you know what? Her mother has had that conversation with her a crap load of times. I assure you, Cedar is not uh, is not fuzzy on the ability to uh, to develop an opioid addiction quickly. This is something she's uh, she's got a, a pretty good handle on, right? Hey, I am so sorry for all of you who have fibro. It is one of to me, fibromyalgia is what drug addiction was a decade and a half ago, right? You just got all of these jackasses out there that want to go. It's not a disease. Right. There are there are boxes you have to tick for something to be a disease. Right. There's symptoms. There's all these things. But one of them is the ability to test. Right. The ability for there be to be a test that you can test for. And fibro, they don't have that test yet. That doesn't mean anything other than they just don't have that test yet. But they're going to. Um. There, I promise they are. But in the meantime, I'm sorry that you guys are dealing with a medical community that doesn't get it. I really am. I tried explaining baseline to my husband. Wasn't particularly successful. He immediately got a parent only needs to spend one third of their time to create secure environment. He didn't get that uh, one third. I'm sorry. And I'm not necessarily surprised. People, I come here every day and I say the exact same thing every single day. Right? I do. I say the same thing. I say it two hours a day. I say it 365 days a year. And then one day somebody goes, oh man, you said something on Wednesday. Okay. Man, it made so much sense. And the light bulb went off. And I don't know, yesterday was a good show because I got a bunch of people that, that sent me uh, uh, correspondence after yesterday's uh, show that said, this made sense to me in a way that other things hadn't. I promise you, I'm reframing other people's stuff. But that's kind of what we do here, right? We reframe what other people say. And hopefully because of our ability to communicate with one another and our connection, you might hear it differently from me than you're going to hear it from somebody else. So don't stop talking because he might hear it the next time or the time after. Lacey, I have not posted the chair video yet. It should be up today. It should be up today. Um, Tracy, I love this. I just went through my safe and threw out many bottles of pain pills. I had some from my open heart surgery 26 years ago. I never take them, but I always fill the uh, prescription. I had 27 full bottles. Good God in heaven. I hope that they've already uh, removed the trash for future references, people. Whenever you throw out um, any of the medication, especially if it happens to be uh, pain meds uh, or narcotics, believe this or not, call the police and tell them you would like to give it to them. Um, this is going to, do you have any idea what 27 bottles of pain pills is worth? For real. I mean, that's, that's a terrifying amount of money, just money. And that, that's when, so very, uh, what really, it, the best way to do it is to call the, uh, the cops and say, I've got some, uh, some pain meds I'd like to get rid of. Cause one of the other things that people do is they put it into the water. Don't do that. People, please don't flush pills. Uh, pharmacies will take them back in most States. Um, uh, the people tend, yeah, 50 K easy says Kelly. And it, it's, it's terrifying how much pain meds, this is really an issue in our country. Um, it is absolutely a, uh, an issue. Safe boxes for prescriptions is an unbelievable concept. Somebody else told me this the other day. This, this is the second time I have heard this, that there are boxes that you can go. Do you have any idea what I would have done if there were boxes that people were throwing pain meds into? I promise you, I don't care what that box was made of. Okay, I was getting in that box. There's no way. There's no way. 
I would have brought a tank. I would have gotten that box. The idea that there would be a box out there, that would be too much for an addict like myself to handle. I promise you. I went into banks. That box would have drove me nuts, Calhoun. I wouldn't have been able to handle it. Uh, neither of my parents ever did drugs or even drank alcohol more than a couple of times before us kids came along. But there's several relatives on mom's side that struggled with addiction. You know, it skips generations. It does all kinds of things. But now the reason that I don't know if you guys have paid attention. This is kind of my life, right? But we had a paradigm shift, right? That all of a sudden people stopped arguing the concept of disease, right? Occasionally you'll hear an ignoramus that will say, it's not a disease. Cancer is a disease. But the vast majority of people that it's not even an argument anymore. And the reason it's not is because you can put someone on a brain scan and say, that scan, that's an addict. It's an addicted brain. That one's not. A brain scan can actually do that now. And that has changed the, uh, the way that things work completely. Mama Spork, we are sorry for your loss. I don't know if you're familiar with the one here on the lifeboat. The one is our way of saying we're giving you a virtual hug. If you're for somebody that prays, we're saying a little prayer for you. For somebody that just says positive energy, we're doing that. But it is our way of saying we're here and we're trying to support. Right. So that one's for you. I'm sorry that you uh, for your loss. I really am. And it's there's nothing worse uh, than watching someone in pain management struggle through pain because society treats them like they're me, and that's. And that's not cool. Um, I'm never going to stop saying this. I'm going to beat the crap out of this until I don't have a show anymore. People who are on pain medication aren't drug addicts. They're people who need pain medication, right? I was a drug addict. They're apples and oranges. But there are people out there today who need to be on pain medication. And that does not make them a bad person, nor does it make them a drug addict. Now, if they take that drug for five years, they're sure as crap dependent on it. They can't. They're going to get sick if they don't take it. That's dependence. Doesn't mean they're drug addicts. If they're taking the pills, the liquid, the whatever, the way it is written on the label, they don't run out 10 days early. They're not trying to score more on the street. Guess what? They're just taking medication. They're no different than someone that's taken insulin. But you know what? We treat them differently than someone that takes insulin. We make them feel bad about themselves. There are people who call every day or leave messages every day saying, I want to get off of my pain medication. And I say, okay, why? Well, it's, you know, it's a narcotic. Okay. Right. Is it messing your life up? Well, no, but you know, it's, this stuff's dangerous, you know, and fentanyl's killing people. And we're, no, no, the stuff on the street that's killing people isn't what you're taking. And if, if, what your takeaway after listening to me is that you don't need to treat your pain, then I'm doing a hump job at what I'm doing here. Because what we're trying to do here is fight addiction, right? I don't want you to live in pain so that you can hang out on the lifeboat. I don't care if you're on pain medication. You can be here. You get it? There's nobody asking you to quit pain medication if you need pain medication. You shouldn't be telling yourself to quit pain medication if you need pain medication. Everybody get that? Now, you know if you're full of crap. You know if you're full of crap. I promise you do. I used to go to a pain specialist and I was full of crap. Doesn't mean I wasn't in pain, but I was working it, right? And you know if you are. If you're doing this to get high, you know it. Wow, before I knew better, I threw out like 2,000 pills flushed. Doctors wouldn't help get off opiates. So I did it myself. I knew what to expect as a former heroin addict. Becca Jean, you're a beast. You are a beast. I've, uh, I've kicked like that. I have, uh, I have kicked ooh, just thrown in a concrete room, right? That's usually, in fact, what am I saying? That's every time I kicked, <laughs> I kicked like that. Um, but yeah, I, I got tossed into a, uh, you know what, Lizzie, I love it. Everybody, everybody should know that, right? Everybody should know that, but um, I'm glad everybody here does. That's a beautiful thing. Everybody here really does. Um, it's, uh, 
I really, it's, it, it pains me to watch people beat themselves up because they're required to take, uh, you know, a medication so that they have a quality of life that's livable. But that's all we're talking about, right? We're talking about giving somebody a quality of life. You know, no one should have to go through life hurting. It just shouldn't happen. I am on Suboxone for pain because a new pain doctor was addicted, but no BS, I am dependent. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, if you're taking Suboxone every day, you're going to be dependent on it. The really nice thing about Suboxone is, um, and uh, people are going to hate me for saying this. I'm going to get hate mail for this, but I really uh, think this is the easiest opioid, I mean, opiates to get off that has ever been created right? It's a synthetic, so it's an opioid. It's, you have the ability to cut this drug in half and continue to cut this drug in half. And if you, I don't mean cut it in half on Monday and then on Tuesday, cut it in half. And then on Wednesday, cut it in half, take about, you know, eight, 10 days between each time you start taking it small. Um, it's, uh, it's a much easier drug to step off of. It's almost impossible to do that with a proper, um, uh, opiate, you know, a proper uh, antagonist. <laughs> I'm going to make it short of you saying I'm going to get hate mail for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it should be the only short. I'm going to get hate mail for this. Uh, what happened with the whole epidemic was misuse. Absolutely it was. It was also yeah, it was misuse. I mean, in but in so many different ways, right? You had you had a uh, you had a family that wanted to hop the curb. They had a drug that was perfect for what it was designed for, right? MS Cotton from the Sacklers was a absolutely perfect painkiller, and it was designed to treat people who were going to die anyway. So it didn't matter if they got addicted, right? This is end of life stuff. When they took a Percocet and tried to do the same thing to it, it was a bad idea from Jump Street. And you know what? I think they knew that. I really do. I think they knew that. I think the entire thing was planned. I don't think there was, I don't think there was a whole lot about that. They, you know, they were writing prescriptions. There was a, a woman I'm working with on the lifeboat. I'm not telling you anything she, because you don't know her name or any of that, but she was on six eighties a day. Her doctor wrote her a prescription for six eighties a day for menstrual cramps. He should be shot. He should be shot. Now, I, I've never had menstrual cramps. I assume you don't get them 365 days in a row. I could be wrong. I literally could be. I don't know. But 6-Oxycontin is a ton, a ton of drug. And the reason that they were doing that is because they thought that the odds of getting addicted to an Oxycontin 80 were astronomically less than the odds of getting addicted to a Loratab. I know that makes zero sense, right? But they had this great literature, right? They had all of this great stuff that said, the stuff you, you got to try to get addicted to this. I'm not making that up. It's literally what the doctor said to me. Don't worry about this, Tommy. You got to try to get addicted to this stuff. He said that to the wrong person. Yeah. Debbie, I oh, I misunderstood. I got it. No, I was addicted to pain meds, but became dependent. Uh, but because of new pain, doctor, I'm on Suboxone for pain. No, I love it. Thank God for you and Quick MD. Thank you. That is so cool. That really is so cool. I got I got news too. You want to hear something insane, people? Just get more. We'll toss this one out, and more to come. But uh, we're 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 talking with some people about the uh, the potential of some sponsorship for the boat, which we had talked about for, I said the very first day that I went live, the very first day I went live. Trust me, the first chance that we've got, right, to sell out, we do. And the reason is we are going to use that money to get more people sober. Get that? And I'm telling you people, uh, we are, this is funny, good timing. The only people I would not take a sponsorship from. All of Big Pharma's plans to make America addicted 
uh, and them get rich. They control the pain relief and the, uh, the control of the addiction relief. Like, you know what? It's, it's amazing. Now, the one thing I will say is that you can't trace the box into the sack worse. God, I wanted to, I really did, but they really don't have a, a you, it's not well hidden. None of that. They didn't seem to have any interest in uh, in treating addiction at any level. This definitely came from a uh, a different camp. Make no mistake, Big Farm is still getting rich treating addiction, uh, but it isn't the Sacklers. I wanted it to be. I really did. I wanted it to be. Uh, I have to take pain meds for my fibro. It's the only thing that works. My suggestion is get an app on your phone so you can document time and date of each pill. I don't trust my memory. Mary Jones, um, yeah. Now, for me, I would have to um, have someone else have it. That's just how that would be. But Wow. I've never heard of this. I've never heard of this. My pain specialist put me on in a low dose naltrexin, 4.5 milligrams for pain. You can still take Tylenol too or Tramadol while uh, taking it, but nothing stronger. It's off label for fibro and it helps me a lot. So what she's saying is um, the the Tylenol 2, which I think is Tylenol 3, isn't it? Is there a Tylenol 2? It's a codeine is what it is. So you could, you could take a low rent um, pain med because the Narcan's not going to mess with you on a really low low rate uh, pain med. Um, but I understand why they would try this. I love the idea that it's working, right? I really, that, that's the coolest thing I've ever heard because naltrexin is doing wonders for a bunch of other things. Naltrexin has the ability to play with, um, to play with what your brain does. I don't even know how to explain it. That, how your brain reacts to uh, to things, it 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 is definitely one of the most fascinating off label substances known to man. It shouldn't do what it does for people with alcohol abuse disorder. It's, I mean, honestly, it doesn't even really make a lot of sense when you think about what it does. But it what it does is it flips off the brain's ability to say alcohol is fun, right? Now they used to have drugs like an abuse where if you take it and then you drink, you get sick. That's not what. Now, trucks and this. What what that does is it allows you to drink. You drink all you want. It steals the fun. I have a question. It steals the fun. I've been thinking about this. Do you think they they're going to have the technology to be able to do that to other drugs? Um, or is it like is there is it a, a process that can be done on a different product? Well, they're trying because with everything to do this. They're trying with everything to do this. Know. Now they have a. I am one hour and three minutes into this. They have a vaccine for cocaine. Now. I don't know where you can get it, but I read the report on it and I know that it was developed. And what it does is it attaches itself to the molecule so that it can't, the, the, the blow molecule, whatever that turns out to be, and keeps it from passing the blood brain barrier. It makes it large enough that it can't pass through, which is the exact same concept that the military is using for the vaccine for opioids, right? It's going to attach itself to the morphine molecule. Now the morphine molecule is too big to pass through the blood-brain barrier. So in essence, you can't get high no matter how much of the stuff you put in your body. Pretty fascinating concept. Pretty fascinating concept. It really is. Um, but we're going to see. Uh, we're going to see how it works, and we're going to see. There's a lot of money now in treating addiction, right? There is a lot of money. Um, oh my God. They said, I don't have fibro because I didn't respond to Lyrica. Well, that's, that's a good doctor right there. Um, cricket stick with that one at that, that, uh, he or she sounds like a winner. I'll tell you what, um, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. If that, if that line of logic worked, there would not be more than one medication for any ailment. Right. We'd still be we'd have one painkiller. We'd have one antibiotic. We'd have one. Oh, my God. There's two of them. Calhoun, what just happened? Why am I looking at two of you? Used to have bad dreams like that, kid. Not going to lie to you. Used to have bad dreams like that. When you were a terror, I'd wake up and there were two of you. I'd be like, no.
Wow. Mara says, Tommy, at my doctor's appointment, she took me way down off Soma, but put me on Oxy 10 too. Well, Oxy's are really, an Oxy 10, what you're really taking is, a, is so it sounds scary and people freak out because it says Oxy, right? But a Percocet is five milligrams. So if you're taking an Oxy 10, you're just taking two Percocets and they're giving it a time release to last throughout the day. It's a very small dose. It really is. It's not a big dose. Don't let the word oxy freak you out. If if the doctor said, I'm going to give you two Percodan and we're going to have it time released throughout the entire day. That's all it is, right? It's uh, it's oxycodone. That's that's Percodan. And then when they put the content on it, just time releases it. But um, I would be interested, just out of curiosity, how much did they drop down the, um, what it, what's the carisoprodol at, the, uh, the Soma? Have they got you less than 150 on that? Yeah, what do they have you at for the for the soma? I'm not a doctor, I'm a drug addict. I'm curious. Question I am on Oxy 10 for pain. It's absolutely necessary because of my pain, but I hate how it makes me feel. Will anything help? Okay, you know what? You need to talk to your doctor, and I'll tell you why. If you're feeling high, they're giving you too much medication. Okay, because in theory, and I have seen this work, I promise. But the theory goes like this. If your pain level is at a 10, you want to take pain medication that's going to equal that, right? But if your pain level is at a four and you take pain medication that equals a five, you're going to feel intoxication. If you take it, pain level is at a two and you take enough pain meds to treat a pain level of 10, you're going to be really intoxicated. Is your nose itching, Tina Marie? If you're feeling all the affectations of opioids on top of it, like, are you sitting there with your nose itching? Are you nodding, right? Because the higher you're feeling, you need to communicate this to your doctor because what they can do is take that down, right? You're taking it, it's, you're gonna need it for pain, right? We, we can agree on this, uh, but we can also agree that if you're feeling a buzz, then they're, then they're giving you too much. That's what it comes down to. But you need to communicate that to them. Just say, I want the pain treatment. I don't want the high. So maybe we need a, if if they if if uh, uh, oxycodone's too much, right? Maybe they need to try a different opioid, right? There are a bunch of them. That's just uh, that's just one. And much like Cricket, who Lyrica didn't work for, trust and believe that doesn't mean a damn thing. They should have they should have then gone to Neurontin, right? There's a bunch of different drugs that normally they would try. Okay, let's see how gabapentin does, right? Pregabalin didn't work. Let's try gabapentin, but your doctor's obviously an asshat. Sorry. Catnip for squirrel. Woohoo. Mom is visiting, so I have to run. Uh, Bobby M, tell mom we said hello, please. That would be great. Had a tough time weaning off Lyrica, says Lumen. Not necessarily withdrawing, but my brain was scrambled for a month. I had the exact same thing happen to me. I was on Lyrica. I got off of it. And when I did, I had brain fog for a really long time. Really, really long time. So that's, that's real. Tina Marie says, I experienced this. Tommy's hundred percent right. I went down to five milligram perk jackpot. Um, I think that that's probably going to be the case. They may, uh, they may just want to take you down to a five. If you're feeling a buzz, you're taking too much, right? Solid. If you're feeling a buzz, you're taking too much. And it's because they're writing a prescription for too much. Some people are very, their receptors are hypersensitive, right? And it takes a much smaller amount because it's not the drug that's getting you high, well, it is, but the receptor, what the drug is doing to the receptor. And if your receptor lets out more off of a, yeah, some people are just really hypersensitive to it. You just probably need a little bit more. Uh, I, this is going to sound terrible. I liked that weird. It's one of the reasons I don't take gabapentin. Um, and I have nerve issues, but I can't take gabapentin. I loved the weird of gabapentin and I abused it, plain and simple. When I had access to Neurontin, I ate that crap like cotton candy. I took so much of it, it was insane. I was in the feds and they were writing me a prescription for 5,600 milligrams of it a day because I too was taking it for multiple reasons. But I was taking that every day and I was buying crap from other people to take. Like I was really abusing the crap out of it. I can't take that drug. But taking it at night to avoid making you feel weird is a great idea because you do get 
you get about six hours, seven hours of weird off of that. If you sleep through it, it should, uh, it should really help. I love that, Mary. And I love that you have a relationship with your husband where you guys can talk like that. That's really a great thing. Aha. So he changed your Soma from 350 milligrams four times a day and changed the time only twice a day now instead of five. Okay. Okay. Um, that's a, that's a good punch too. Um, 350 milligrams, four times a day. Yeah, that's a punch. 350 is a, um, that's a good size Soma. Uh, but four times a day, I, I think you're, you know what? I love that they're doing this Mara. And I hope you do too. They're, they're playing with your meds to try, you know, this is what they're supposed to be doing with everybody, right? We're looking for that. So what they're, here's the mindset. I don't know how well they explain this to you, right? But from a drug addict standpoint, right? They're cutting down on the muscle relaxer and they're increasing the painkiller. So what they believe is that you're going to get more pain relief if the, uh, you know, by attacking this with less muscle relaxer, right? They think that that's probably not uh, what's causing as much of the pain, obviously, because that's a good size decrease, right? And that's good because Soma, uh, I'm guessing you've been on Soma a while, but Soma, anybody on the boat right now that hasn't done one, if they ate a, a 350 would be buzzing hard. And if they ate uh, four of them over a course of a day, they'd be ripped. I promise they'd have a really good buzz. But like everything else, if you need it, it's not going to do the exact same thing. ASAP Lizzie, I uh, take a gummy um, every night to go to sleep. Um, I take one that is specifically designed to put you to sleep. Hi, Simone's girl. Good to see you. Sorry that we, yeah, we changed up the time. It, it has caused uh, us to miss some people. Um, and that sucks. It really does. But we have been fortunate that uh, it gives us an opportunity to uh, to get a lot of people uh, in that hadn't been, which is great because the family is communicating more, which is a great thing. But I'm glad you're here. Um. Lori, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say something that's going to make me really unpopular, but I'm going to say it anyway. There you go, Calhoun. You can make that one. I'm going to get hate mail for this. Gabapentin gives me no side effects and I take it twice a day instead of the prescribed three. Doctor agrees. Good. But Prozac knocked me out in half an hour. Um, I have a thing about Prozac people. I'm not a fan. Um, if you, if you Google, uh, the ingredients of Prozac, you're going to find that there is a large amount of fluoride. Like I think it's 40% of the pill or something is fluoride. And, and I don't know, I don't want to be made docile. And I think that that's really, it does that. And I, I choose to be docile and that may not make anybody happy, but I would like the opportunity to not be, if I don't want to be I'd like the opportunity to be who I am. If I need to be, uh, if I need to smack the crap out of somebody or grab somebody's larynx because of how they're treating a woman or a kid, I want that person to still be in there. I can't take any of that stuff, but uh, Tegretol. Tegretol is abused viciously in the prison system, believe it or not. Tegretol works for my nerve pain. Um, I am okay. Uh, I'm okay with, uh, the one a day, but I lose about, uh, six to eight weeks of memory every winter when I have to take the higher doses. Uh, so Tegretol inside the, uh, federal prison system are sold under the name Brown Bombas and they go for a dollar a piece and they are abused to beat hell which I promise you does not make any sense to me because if you take Tegretol more than you are supposed to, it is a terrifying, terrifying thing. It's, it's not particularly pleasant at all. <laughs> Info dump truck says, man, this conversation has taken me back to my childhood. I don't know how, uh, if that's it, that could be a really bad thing, but, uh, I love it. Came over from surviving the survivor, says Lisa. Well, welcome to the boat. And love how educated and supportive you guys are about prescription drugs. Thoughts on Xanax? Um, 
So, you know, here's the thing on Xanax. If you need Xanax, it's a great drug, right? It's a fantastic drug. Alprozolam. Um, it was not the, uh, it was one of the like second um, gen uh, benzodiazepines when Valium came out and kind of replaced all of the barbiturates that people were getting prescriptions for. Like if you had an anxiety problem, you were probably taking second all or two and all or one of those, or even quaaludes. Um, when they switched from that, because there were so many people who overdosed and died on that stuff, accidental overdoses, they switched to benzodiazepines and Valium brought to you by the Sackler family. First drug ever advertised on earth, the Valium, uh, Arthur Sackler made him very, very wealthy. Uh, but the second generation, they wanted to make Valium a little bit better, right? So they added a component to it. So it's not just purely a benzo. There's also some kind of a, there's something in there that's supposed to make you happy. Valium doesn't make you happy. It makes you calm. It's like drinking six beers. Well, Xanax is like drinking six beers and having a sniff of ecstasy. <laughs> not enough to actually do any good, but you sort of, Kind of whack that smell of X toward you so that you've got some kind of a uh, of a happy vibe that is built into the pill. The problem is people like to drink on it, right? You know, most of the people who take this stuff like to maybe throw one drink on top of it. And there's a mathematical equation that says one plus one equals three. So if you have a beer and you have a one milligram Xanax, you basically just took three milligrams of Xanax. So you got to be very careful with it. It's also a respiratory depressant. And being a respiratory depressant, if you mix it with any other respiratory depressants, i.e. alcohol, painkillers, sleeping pills, you greatly jump up your risk for overdose because overdose deaths are not caused by your heart stopping, as everybody says. It stopped, it, you die because you stopped breathing and you don't care that you stopped breathing. I don't want you to, to have a mental image of someone suffocating and gasping for breath. You don't care. There's no gasp. You stop breathing and you go, oh, that's all right. For real. When you bring people back from overdoses, they're usually very, very angry at you. No, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's the truth. If you're taking the stuff as the doctor prescribed it and you need it, it's a great drug. Only you know if you need it. If you're buying it because you kind of like a buzz, be careful with it because it's a, it's a dangerous drug and it is absolutely addicting. Last thing I'll say is this, benzodiazepines under any name, doesn't matter what name, right? Valium, um, Xanax, uh, Ativan, whatever. If you're taking them for a long enough period of time, you can't quit cold turkey, it will kill you, right? Your body will seize up. It's like alcohol. Benzos and alcohol, talk to a doctor before you quit, right? Have a plan. Talk to a doctor. Don't quit cold turkey. Did you have a chance to look into Davigo? Um, I have not. I did download it. Um, it's a, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I look up about three of these a day. It's a, it's a, uh, it's an agonist and a, uh, yeah, I, 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 no, I'm not ready to do the show on it, but I'm looking into it and I do want to, uh, to talk about it. I'm talking your language. You're so scared right now because the Xanax and booze sounds crazy good. Dirty mouse. It'll also kill you. Right, we really got it. There you go. Oh, Rexon antagonist. Thank you, Kel. Um, alcohol is no joke. Alcohol is the most dangerous uh, drug, in my opinion, on planet Earth. Right, but uh, don't mix it with things. For God's sakes, don't mix it with things, huh? Please, don't don't mix it. Yes, uh, that's a good one. My favorite response, why are you sitting on my chest and smacking the crap out of me? Because uh, you died, stupid. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, the one that really got me was uh, my friend Louie, his girl. Uh, I was working on her in a bathroom in a uh, in a motel. I'm smacking her in the face. Like, I'm giving her the business. And I'm trying to do sternum rubs. And she's got an underwire bra on, which I've pulled up. And it's up, like, around her neck. And I got, and I'm just, I mean, I am really giving her sternum rub. Her, her lips are blue. It's all bad. And she goes like this and sits up and looks at me and goes, why are you being so mean to me? <laughs> and I looked at her boyfriend. I'm like, handle this. And she's all you now. Why are you being so mean to me? I said, man, I've been, I'm keeping you breathing. What do I think is safe reduction in Xanax? 
would reducing it by half be too much? I am never going to tell somebody what uh, a safe reduction is, but here's what I will say. Don't be in a hurry, right? Yeah, I think that's way too much. Talk to your doctor because they're professionals. I wouldn't cut a dose in half on Suboxone and I can't even, you know, get in any trouble doing that. We're not, we don't need to be in a hurry, right? To, to be off of a benzo. The, the, the lower you taper it down to, the less bull crap we're going to have when you finally stop, right? The less problems we're going to have in the rebuilding process of your life and all of that. The more you go and fall off the edge of the cliff, the more trouble you have trying to put yourself back together after you bounce at the at the bottom of it, if that makes sense. Right? Hope that makes sense. Yeah, benzos are benzos really can be uh, um, Becca Jane. I have I am just screwing up, I guess. What am I doing around Becca Jane? I don't want you to be invisible, hon. It's there's going to be about 6,000 um, comments that are going to fly by, babe. I'm not trying to miss you, and I promise you I'm not. But I get 6,000 of these in an hour. What did I miss? Please don't tap out, and please don't go invisible. I mean, if you listen to us here, we don't want you invisible, right? We want you connected. We really do. And one of the things that we really work on here is getting people together, right, so that they can talk to one another here then have the opportunity to go and meet up with uh, people in places where there's not a 45 second delay between what I say and when you hear it, then a 45 second delay on what you write to where it gets back to me. When you run that, we're looking at about a minute and a half to two minutes in, in either direction. And that gets really hard. You got a year in this, right? Don't do this alone. That's, it's not where you want to go. You're going to end up back where you don't want to be. The opposite of addiction is connection. If this is a struggle to connect here, go someplace where it's not, right? Go to an AA group or go to go someplace where you're super comfortable and you feel like no one's not looking at you because I see you, people here see you, but you need to be seen and you need to be somewhere you where you feel like you're being seen. I'm sorry if we're not doing that for you. I mean that. I really do. I mean that. But if we're not, then please go to an AA or please go because the connection is such a part of the recovery. It really is. And there are people who are going to dislike me from Jump Street. There are people that are going to dislike the format from Jump Street. It doesn't mean you don't need connection. It doesn't mean that you don't need a support group, right? This is such a real thing. Um, it really is. This is the real thing. And if, if you don't do it, I promise it doesn't work out really great. Like bad things begin to happen. And I, I don't want... I really don't want any of that to happen. You feel me? I don't want any of that to happen. So if it's not us, and it, and it might not always be us, right? But if it's not us, then please find somewhere where you're going to find um, the connection because it's, I'm not making this up to get a view. This is what keeps people like us from going back into places that we don't want to be. And I'll be honest with you, every time somebody leaves, we're not as good as we were. But every time we get a few more in here, we're better than we were the day before. Right? The connection thing is a huge deal. Go watch that call in show last night. Watch how excited Reese got to hear the voices of the people who just leave comments in her in her chat. This connection stuff is so much more real than anybody gives it credit for. <laughs> life-changing real, man. It's life-changing real. All right, everybody. I'm going to see you on the next one. I'm Captain Tommy Scoville, the cat. The cat is probably off doing something with Johnny Scoville and an electric guitar. I don't know what it is, but he starts playing that thing, and the cat just, he's a, she's a fan. All right, people, I will see you on the next one. Calhoun, I'm not bringing you on. It's been a long show. I love you all. We'll see you. Bye-bye.